Meet the most dedicated and hardworking employee at this local Starbucks, Sam Dawson, a man who wears his autism with pride and never lets it hamper his zest for life. One regular morning, he gets a call from the hospital. He is about to become a father. Sam runs through the streets of New York to reach the hospital. There, he can see Rebecca, the mother of his soon-to-be daughter, squirming in pain. He tries to be of help, but gets pushed aside. Soon, the nurses introduce him to the perfect infant girl. There and then, he knows instantly that he will do anything for her. A diehard fan of the Beatles, Sam names her Lucy Diamond Dawson after the famous song. Rebecca, in contrast, is not too happy with the birth of their daughter. While leaving the hospital, Sam holds Lucy tightly and runs to catch the bus that will take them home. Seeing this, Rebecca changes her path and disappears into the crowd. She and Sam were never in an actual relationship. She decidedly did not sign up for motherhood. Sam calls out for her, but it is of no use. Abandoned with his daughter, he stands there helpless as the bus doors shut. Despite his condition, Sam is trying his best to be the father his child deserves. He wakes up in the middle of the night to change her, making a diaper from a huge cloth and badge pins. He goes to Target to buy diapers, formula, and other baby essentials, even if the size of the place makes him feel lost. Sam is trying hard, but despite that, Lucy keeps crying all day long and barely sleeping. Hearing the loud cries of the baby, Sam's neighbor Annie offers to help him out. She tells him that babies need to be fed every two hours. To help him keep track of time, she asks him to keep Nickelodeon on TV and gives him a feeding guide according to the shows. Consumed by fatherhood, Sam forgets about the other parts of his life. His friends, Brad, Robert, Joe, and Ifty are all supportive, however, coming over and spending time with the father-daughter duo. They play with Lucy and help distract Sam from his exhausting duties. Days keep passing, and Lucy keeps getting bigger. Unable to take her to work with him, Sam asks Annie to babysit. Reluctant at first, but unable to resist Lucy's sweet eyes, Annie agrees. Lucy grows into a smart and inquisitive young girl, often asking questions that Sam has no proper answer to. Sometimes she questions Sam about her mother, which he has no choice but to evade. Rebecca, who was homeless at the time, explicitly told Sam shortly after Lucy's birth that she never wanted a child with him, just a bed to sleep in, which went horribly wrong. Lucy knows her father is different from others, and she counts herself lucky for it. Her daddy comes with her to the park. Unlike the other daddies, the two share a beautiful bond. They enjoy silly breakfasts together at IHOP on Wednesdays, have pillow fights, play on the swings, and read Green Eggs and Ham by Dr. Seuss. As Lucy is starting school, Sam and his friends take her shoe shopping. Due to Sam's lack of a steady income, he is unable to pay the whole bill. Mindful of that, his friends don't hesitate to pitch in as much as they can to help him out. The gang walks out of the shop happy and with balloons. Despite her age, Lucy's family situation means that she has to be the mature one most of the time. She cooperates with her father and does not argue with him. She requests to be taken to Bob's Big Boy for burgers instead of IHOP one Wednesday. But seeing his reluctance to change, she allows their routine to remain stable and comfortable for him. Sam is a very supportive and understanding father. During a presentation in school, he distracts the class while Lucy forgets her speech. However, Seeing that all parents are not as supportive as him, he tells Lucy to befriend a boy named Connor. Connor is a mean boy who is creeped out by Sam and calls him a slur. Not long after that, Lucy is given a new book from school to read. She asks Sam for help with the book, but it is too hard for him. She ends up helping him with a few words, after which she suggests they go back to reading Green Eggs and Ham. One day, as Sam is sitting at a restaurant trying to find a word in the International House of Pancake Quiz to impress Lucy, he is approached by a sex worker. The two have a pleasant conversation, as Sam does not see any reason why not to befriend the friendly woman. The incident leads to him being brought into the police station, where a case worker from the Department of Child and Family Services notices him. She is concerned about his daughter's well-being and suspects that he is not fit to be a parent. Sam has been called to school by Lucy's principal. The woman shows him a drawing made by Lucy, which depicts the girl dwarfing the tiny figure of her father. She informs him that Lucy has been holding herself back in class to be able to maintain the same mental capacity as her father, seven years of age. This 
This deeply saddens Sam, and later that night, he insists that Lucy read the book in hard English for him. Lucy refuses, saying that she does not want to read anything that her daddy cannot read. Sam tells her that seeing her do well makes him happy. In the end, she reads the book out loud to him. The next Wednesday, the duo decides to go to Bob's Big Boy instead of IHOP. Lucy is thrilled and immediately knows her order, but Sam is persistent that he wants French pancakes with fruit topping on the side, the food he used to order at the other restaurant. When the waitress informs him that they don't serve those pancakes, he gets agitated and starts to yell. Lucy is scared to see him like this. The waitress calms him down by telling him she will check with the chef. Lucy slowly starts getting embarrassed by her father. Sam plans a surprise party for her birthday and calls over her friends, including Connor and his father. While they are waiting for Lucy, Margaret Calgrove from the Department of Child and Family Services pays them a visit. Sam gets into an argument with Connor, which gets physical when Connor's father pushes Sam away from his child. In a fit of anger, Connor blurts out that Lucy has told all her friends that she is in fact adopted and that Sam is not her real father. Seeing the chaos that ensued and Sam's treatment of Connor, Margaret decides that Lucy is no longer safe with Sam. She takes Lucy into custody and informs Sam that any further discussion must be held with the judge. The judge tells Sam that from now on, he will be allowed to meet Lucy two times a week for two hours only until his case is heard by the court for further review. Sam has a breakdown and starts yelling. He demands to take Lucy home with him but is ignored and asked to leave. Sam's friends suggest that he get a lawyer for himself and give him an ad from the Yellow Pages. He follows their advice and ends up reaching the office of one Rita Harrison. She is a short-tempered and impatient lady who has a hard time juggling being a good lawyer and a good mom. Sam tells her about Lucy and tries to show her pictures. She refuses to take his case as she knows he cannot afford her fees but still tells him to leave his number with her assistant, as she has a friend who does such cases. Sam requests his boss to give him a promotion and allow him to make coffee. He needs the money to get himself a good lawyer, but his boss is reluctant. Sam tracks down Rita at an office party and asks her if she has contacted her friend yet. Rita brushes him off and tells him she will get back to him if she can. Rita's colleagues ask her who that man is and to look likable, she tells them that he is her pro bono case. Everyone laughs, knowing how Rita truly is. Meanwhile, it is finally time for Sam and Lucy's first monitored visit, and Sam is running late. Lucy is sure that her father will show up and refuses to leave without him. An hour and 45 minutes into the two-hour frame, she sees him running towards her. She gets up to go meet her daddy. They sit together, and Sam tells Lucy about Rita. She feels guilty for what she did, and says she would never have any other daddy than Sam. He tells her she has nothing to be sorry about and that he will buy an answering machine so she can send him messages. Sam has a letter from the court addressed to his lawyer, so he drops by Rita's office. She tries to ignore him at first, but seeing her colleagues gossip about her, she takes up Sam's case for free to prove them wrong. The letter demands that Sam appears for a court-mandated psych evaluation that same day at 3 p.m. Seeing the lack of time, Rita offers to give him a ride in her car. Sam does not care for psychologists much, as he has been to way too many as a child. He gets stressed out as the shrink asks him questions about Lucy and ends up being too paranoid to answer properly. As Rita prepares for their court appearances, she tries to get witnesses of Sam's character as a father. Although his friends are supportive, none of them offer testimonies that would work in front of a judge. She reaches the Starbucks that he works at in rage and demands that he get someone who can vouch for his fatherhood. He decides to ask Annie for help, but as she suffers from acute agoraphobia and doesn't get out of the house, she refuses saying it would only make things worse for him. The date finally arrives, and all of Sam's friends are at the court to support him. The psychologist states that Sam has confessed to being confused as a parent and to having made some huge mistakes during his life with Lucy. The Department of Child and Family Services tries to use this against Sam, but Rita steps in and drills the shrink with questions until she cries. Sam, though sad that Rita made her cry, is mostly just thankful that she is helping him. He offers to buy her lunch, but she stops him, telling him he does not need to pretend to be mature. This hurts Sam. He wants his lawyer to believe him and his maturity. During one of their supervised visits, Lucy tells Sam that he is allowed to take her to the park. He takes her, but she refuses to get off the bus. She wants to run away with Sam 
He thankfully knows this is wrong and gets the girl back to the foster home. Only problem with that, he only manages to do that at 3 a.m. Lucy's caseworker is furious, but Rita requests her to show some compassion for the man's condition. The next day in court, it is Lucy's turn to testify. The girl, willing to do anything to get her father back, perjures herself. Sam wants her back too, but he also doesn't want for his daughter to have to lie in court. He prays for Lucy every night, and as she sees his desperation, Annie decides to help her out. She overcomes her fear of open spaces and comes to court to give a testimony, advocating for Sam's parenting ability. Her statement is somewhat undermined as the counsel asks her about her own father, which makes her emotional, and she starts crying. After court, Sam and Rita drop Annie home and make their way to Rita's house to prepare for the next day. There, they found Willie, Rita's son, sitting alone watching movies. Both of his parents work late at all hours, and he doesn't have anyone to watch over him during the day. The boy is cold and distant when talking to his mother, and it is obvious that they have a strained relationship. Rita tries to teach Sam how to bend the truth to his advantage, but it does not work as he refuses to lie. They practice all night for his testimony and bond over parenting. She lends him one of her husband's suits for court. Sam's big day arrives. He gets a promotion at work and is now allowed to make coffee. He does his best but still gets flustered by the sheer number of orders. He messes up the blender settings and ruins his suit, which in turn makes him late for his hearing. The opposing counsel is, of course, ready and eager to use this against him. Once he gets there, though, Sam answers all the questions properly as he practiced with Rita. He starts talking about his past and how he was institutionalized. His past is a sensitive topic for him. He gets flustered and confesses to not being able to give Lucy everything she deserves blaming himself for losing custody. While saying goodbye, Lucy and Sam refuse to break apart from each other. The bond between them is too strong and they cannot live without each other. This causes Lucy to at first be hostile towards her new foster family, but over time, she starts to warm up to them. Sam, meanwhile, has shut himself out completely and fails to attend his scheduled meetings with Lucy. Rita has made numerous attempts to reach him, but all in vain. Exhausted, she kicks his door open, only to see him hiding behind a wall of origami bricks. She pleads with him to let her help him. Sam shuts down her efforts, saying he is not perfect like her. This infuriates Rita. She does not have a perfect life. Her husband is cheating on her. Her colleagues do not like her, and her own son hates her. She starts to cry because she feels like the world is falling apart. Sam hugs her to comfort her, and the two end up sharing a vulnerable moment together. After his talk with Rita, Sam takes up an extra job to make more money and starts visiting Lucy again. Lucy's foster mother is confused upon seeing him, informing him that his not showing up really hurt the child. Sam apologizes to a very angry Lucy and tries to calm the girl down. He tells her he loves her very much and is scared. During Sam's first evaluation following the trial, Rita starts listing all the changes in his life that Sam has made for Lucy, only to be interrupted by Margaret. The social worker informs them that the foster family is pushing for adoption. This revelation completely breaks Sam. Rita suggests giving the guardianship up to the foster family and pushes for joint custody, making Sam feel that she does not have faith in his chances. He is in pain and cries about how badly he needs Lucy back. Seeing him cry, Rita starts to cry too, and in an attempt to ease the situation, cracks a dark joke about her marriage. The two nod in agreement and laugh. Sam tries to make amends and get closer to Lucy. He moves into an apartment just down the street from her foster home, encouraging her to see her daddy more often. One night, Lucy escapes from her bedroom window and walks to Sam's apartment. Delighted as he is to see her, he takes her back home and hands her over to her foster parents. The duo starts hanging out more often, much to the disappointment of Randy, the foster mother. The sneaking out late at night becomes a habit for Lucy, something Sam is not a fan of. When the family puts up a fence outside her window, the girl tries to sneak out through the main door and is caught by Randy. She offers her a corn cake from IHOP and tells her that she can meet her daddy whenever she wants, but needs to inform Randy first. Lucy's growing closeness to her father has resulted in distance between Randy and her. Rita comes over to Sam's new apartment with Willie to prepare him for the adoption hearing at court. She lends him yet another suit. Sam is hopeful for the hearing, and Rita is very happy that she took Sam's case. It helped her just as much as it helped him. That night, while Sam is asleep, there is a knock on the door. 
To his surprise, it is Randy with a sleeping Lucy. The woman is crying and hands Lucy over to Sam. She confesses that she could never give Lucy the same kind of love that Sam can give her and promises to be on his side in court. Sam confides in her and tells her that he has always wanted Lucy to have a mother. He wants her to be that mother for her. Randy is touched and accepts his offer without a second thought. Sam finally has full custody of his daughter. She is a loved, adored, and smart girl. The movie ends with a soccer match of Lucy's, which is attended by Sam, Randy and her husband, Rita, Willie, and all of Sam's friends.